Hello, dear viewers, listeners of the podcast. Today, in the studio of Riga Security Forum, we have Mayor of uh, Riga City, uh, Martin Stakis. And our topic of the conversation is energy and climate. Uh, in from the local perspective, not from the global perspective, but Riga is a important and significant city in the region, in the Baltic region. It's uh, maybe not the largest city, but uh, it influences uh, the energy consumption in the region and how we view mobility of the citizens in the future, how we view the perspective of living in a cleaner city, in a city where there are, where the homes are warmer. So, respectively, Riga city as a a capital city of Latvia has significance in the region, not only in Latvia. And hello, Mr. Statis. Hello. And the first question, more general one. The perspective of Riga city. How do we view the energy and climate topics? How do we have to view, view them? You know, we have to answer to these questions uh, constantly and uh, we need to also ask our questions whether our citizens need to be able to respond to this question. If we look at what the scientists and researchers wrote in 2011 uh, regarding what is going to happen at, in 2021, it is floods, uh, temperature increase, and now I think nobody can... Uh, everybody believes already that the climate change is happening. Also, when uh, the CO2 levels are as high as never before. It, is, it was also the first election when on the foreground of things there was this topic and it was the first election which was won uh, due to and also thanks to drawing attention to this particular topic. And oftentimes we hear whether it's not going to take away uh, some of the funding and money from us. But yes, I agree, it requires investment. But if we want to, for example, switch to LED in our homes, it is going to help, but it requires some funding and some financial spending. And that goes the same with explanation to the citizens. That, for example, LED light bulbs, uh, LED light sources need to be changed less frequently. And also the city has only two ways it can go. The ambitious one, when we choose to go the path, the brave path, which is also uh, certified and uh, approved by international community. And, all, and the other path is, and, and also we have to um, remember that we are going to also attract more investment by being progressive. And the other one is the way to stagnate to go backwards. For example, Paris now is a good example of the city which accomplished uh, and uh, uh, s solved their mobility problems. And also in, in Riga in 2008 and 9, we did nothing regarding this topic and we now need to be quicker. So you're referring to Paris uh, heavy traffic. So it means that we in Riga, we are going to lose our competitive uh, advantage and competitiveness as such. Yes, it is not a question for Riga what we have to do, because we know what we have to do. But we need to ask, her, ask the question, how to explain and it's to the citizens. And this, is, and this is why it is important that there are such cities like Vienna, like Paris, we can go to, we can ask them what you learned 
how we can convince our citizens to support the changes. Because everybody wants change, but nobody wants to adopt. So I understand also that um, Riga, for Riga, there is also a possibility to exchange experience with other cities because it is uh, part of the membership of uh, some city exchange. Yes, in the future, how we are going to uh, attract more investment, for example, Paris Declaration, Paris Agreement, if it has been signed by the city or not. It is important because it is the dividends of our ambitious plan. And for Riga, being also a capital city, everything on the national level can also be projected to the level of Riga city. For example, energy efficiency of the uh, of the homes, um, of the buildings, transport, mobility, uh, heating of homes and other topics. Are, is there anything you, as mayor of Riga, uh, while speaking with your partners, uh, with subordinates, with colleagues, with citizens, what, which would you set as the priority number one for the city, which you would say that everything else can wait a little bit? 60% of the state economy uh, is... Um, Riga contributes 60% uh, of the whole uh, country's economy, although 30% of the people only live here. I think Riga is a major player here, the most important one. And the first thing is that this has to be on the agenda as the highest priority and the question number one. We, uh, there needs to be a commission for people, for experts who report for whom it is of utmost importance and so we move on. And the next thing is how municipalities, local councils need to work is there has to be a plan, a straightforward plan. What are we doing firstly, secondly and thirdly, etc. and how it influences the work of the municipality. 2030 plan is almost ready and we are going to direct it for uh, discussions, for public discussions and then we know how we move on. And we know what are major challenges. 40% of CO2 is from uh, cars, from transport, 20% uh, from production, 20% from households. And the goals here, I can now tell, uh, they are rather ambitious. We want to be fully climate neutral, neutral until 2030 as a local government, as the city. And we want to set the standard and show the example. 2000 uh, buildings renovated, 20% uh, decrease of energy consumption in municipality sector zero emission uh, public transportation fleet and also lighting in the city with renewable sources from renewable sources well very ambitious plans each of the points would influence significantly the sector and we need to show it to whole europe and then we will say that riga is ready referring to the tale that riga is never ready Riga has set, set the priority to become the leader in the Baltic states and this is where we're heading. Very nice to hear. Uh, for example, uh, also as I know, is um, the central heating in the city uh, one of the priorities and uh, how uh, and how we produce this energy and also that we know now that there is no difference between the right and left bank and uh, we are burning uh, natural gas for heating of homes and uh, has Riga thought about reducing this um, reducing uh, the dependency on the natural gas in heating even though you see the big chimneys, um, the people sometimes think that um, 
the people sometimes think that it's very uh, that it produces a lot of pollutants, but actually it's um, it's just vapors mostly. Gas, biomass, these are the resources, and um, and I think that we are going to achieve our goals uh, in the uh, in the next several years, but. The difficulty is actually uh, the left bank of uh, Daugava River, where there's a lot of people with fireplaces which uh, burn uh, burn wood in order to heat their homes. And there are also people, not only those people, but and households, but also people who cannot even afford wood. And this is the problem, because they collect anything, they take anything and burn it. And so we can only connect them to the central heating of the city. Well, the solution would be to connect them to the central heating. And we also see that there are people who could switch, but they are not doing this. And this is what we have restart agency, which they and their um, their objective is going to be inform about heat pumps, about solar panels, because nowadays, today, it's not it's not that expensive actually and you can attract the funding so that you wouldn't even feel from the future uh, saved uh, uh, monthly installments you wouldn't even feel this investment this is one of the uh, most important goals to achieve and also when we had this when we remember the situation in the 90s when everybody chooses how they uh, switch and to what kind of heat source they switch not any more topical because we need to choose a uh, environmentally friendly system or we connect to the central heating to the whole city um my intention was also to torture so to say you a little bit uh, to choose one or the other priority which i would be telling uh, structural changes or one particular kind of uh, heat source or transport mobility uh, so like if you had to choose one which are you going to start with we're going to choose uh, like we're going to achieve everything and draw attention to everything but the number one priority which we are going to start with is mobility what can we do First of all, we can switch to more environmentally friendly fleet in public transportation. We have diesel buses uh, and we are now purchasing 40 electric buses. And I think that by 2030 we're going to have all our fleet changed. But this is not the only thing. There are some very simple things. Today, while looking outside of the window of my office, to the bank of river Daugava, during one minute, nine large lorries passed by. And I can risk assuming that they're not going to port, I think they're going to customs points. This is a such a simple problem can be solved if we are actually than uh, introducing electronic system as Estonians did, because they don't need to be in the center of the city. Low emission zones, for example, when already now it is important for citizens to tell the citizens that please uh, do not uh, like do not hesitate to switch to this uh, lower emission uh, mobility solutions, because it is going to very soon become very expensive already well we are we need to answer and produce and provide clear answers to the citizens currently the switch and adoption is um, is slow and definitely in the future it is going to be more expensive well that is clear and also the green deal this is what they are talking about some love the love it some criticize it it's not just ideology that we need to be environmentally more friendly it is related to economic processes we need to timely give signal also to entrepreneurs that this is our goal and objective 
publicly because technology introductions and nothing has occurred in the world without harmonization with someone who would then be able to uh, provide for the solutions, products and services to the end user. Yes, however, there is also a difference. Why I'm telling that mobility is problem number one? Because, for example, renovating homes um, is going to reduce uh, is going to the more insulated homes are going to reduce their utility bills and they have to accept this but for example switch from private transportation to public transportation it is inconvenience the bicycle infrastructure building also for uh, currently it um, it produces inconveniences for uh, for car drivers and we see it we see it as an inconvenience whereas insulation would be only more convenient living well there's this gap between intention and action as we have heard sometimes subjective gap it can be objective that for example funding is missing and if, even if we do give people the money it doesn't guarantee that the result is going to come and here with the mobility what are the particular like concrete ideas what can we do maybe you can share some ideas the funds or resilience funds uh, 300 millions are intended for this uh, public transportation uh, bicycle infrastructure uh, railroads it is clear that in long term and the main concern is going to be that from Salaspils in order to go to Meshtsiams one of the neighborhoods in Riga we need to go through center so currently there's a transport squeezing inside the center from outside of Riga and from all neighborhoods of Riga uh, but we need the mobility points in order for people not to go through the center and uh, within the mechanism funding there are six points intended already like that but I believe that we need to build more and I need I believe that we need to build transport line in order to connect uh, public transportation and uh, bicycle infrastructure, railroad, all in one system with one ticket between the train and other means of public transportation and also tens of kilometers, hundreds of kilometers in order to connect also Riga city with the nearest also other municipalities I think in four to five years and in ten years definitely you're going to see major changes in public transportation and in infrastructure. Well, I think that's very positive and uh, Riga citizens also uh, uh, are expecting, have been expecting for a long time already some changes and uh, nice surprises and uh, improvements in infrastructure because currently with traffic jams and with time spent in public transportation currently is um, has not changed for very many years and of course also uh, uh, also uh, paid parkings in the city in the city center yes we do have them already yes but they are going to become more expensive and now the energy efficiency of the buildings and their insulation Riga is uh, this uh, large um, large amount of households really live in Riga as we already talked about what are those revolutionary steps how can we motivate additionally to what already state does how can Riga give the uh, give the momentum to this energy efficiency market I think by setting more ambitious goals now we know 160 uh, we need to insulate and renovate 6,000 homes. 2,000 homes are intended for next several years. This is a minimum in the program. 
just 10 times more than it is currently now because now 160 residential buildings only are uh, renovated. What about the mechanisms? Well, um, currently it is not possible with the mechanisms we have in place. Looking at, for example, Lithuania, in the direction we have chosen uh, by grants, not rotation fund, for example, as it is in Lithuania, I think without rotation fund, uh, we will not be able to achieve this. This is the idea, which is already in the Ministry of uh, Economics, in, and uh, we are going to go into this direction. Uh, but it, anyways, it, we can achieve this, uh, and we need to we need to convince the people in big homes where thousands of people live. Um, and this is the thing which definitely the local government can do. It can be an intermediary between the citizens and the agency where they are going to receive help uh, with projects. And sometimes they will tell, here you go, the project is already ready, it is prepared. And there are citizens who say that they are ready, they are ready to go, uh, come to the agencies, come to us. It is clear that um, people are going to insulate, renovate their homes and uh, drastically they will have reduction in their utility bills. But we need to look at the fund uh, to also uh, provide solution for that. There are proposals which we can put on the table. I definitely see that it is real. Uh, it is not impossible to achieve. There are also uh, lenders available. And I would say that funding is not the most important problem, so to say. Uh, the most important problem is willingness to do it. Involvement in order to achieve this, uh, I think, rotation fund. Very well. And I think also change in habits because um, we also say like today it requires a lot of money from me from some mystical mysterious uh, uh, advantage in the future but i would say well you know what i don't know how long i'm going to live and where i'm going to live so maybe it doesn't uh, it's not my problem i come from small town and um and, and I, I have been to those homes and I ask them, we have asked them, how is it? Is it more convenient now to live in a renovated home? And they say yes. The homes are not that uh, hot, not that cold, etc. So it also improves their, uh, the value of their homes for later sale, for example. Environment, energy consumption. Well, what about yourself? Uh, how do you, um, would you say you are conscious uh, person in, the, in this respect? Well, I'm also an entrepreneur and I calculate. Currently, I am solving the issue of uh, electricity bill. And this is why I have also now concluded agreement for solar panel installation. Within four to six months, next four to six months, I am going to, I hope to solve this issue and and in spring, I'm expecting to also become an owner of an electric vehicle. And I am taking all these steps with very careful considerations. Because I think even if it is expensive, I just have to look into a long term calculation. I need to see how my life is going to change, how our lives are going to change and whether it is going to be fiscally neutral already in the first year or not. And this is how I also am trying to encourage also other people. Very well, micro level, uh, micro level. And, and um, well, like in the end, one or two uh, advices to your neighbor, for example. What would you say? What are your selling points? Well, I can advise uh, our situations are not the same, you know, uh, I believe. But the city has to set the example. It has to be as an example. For example, rent out the roof, uh, real estate, the roof area for solar panel installations. For example, the city has to start with, uh, with itself. And when 
we do, when we become this example, only then we can go to the citizens and advise them something. And also, I encourage you to go and consult with experts, consultants, and I really do believe that expert preparation and their knowledge sharing with the citizens is so important, so that they see that shift to the climate neutral solutions, to more environmental, environmentally friendly solutions is not that expensive. And you can already make the decisions today. And I think these, uh, this is something to take away from this, uh, this such conclusions. Mayor of Riga, Martin Statis says it's nothing is impossible. Uh, we have to set the goals and achieve them, uh, go forward uh, ambitiously. We can be more uh, environmentally friendly, spend more uh, less energy and spend it more efficiently. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.